Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well and of course Arnie does too. On this channel I've done plenty of videos on recently extinct animals. This is a very saddening yet important topic as the changes we've made to the world have led to a mass extinction event. Researching these topics can be very depressing but luckily there are some uplifting stories of animals that have come back from the brink of extinction. In this video I'll be covering just a few of these species as I'll be going through five animals that have come back from the brink of extinction. And for our first species we'll head to New Zealand as we have my favourite animal, the kakapo. The kakapo is a flightless nocturnal ground dwelling parrot that is endemic to New Zealand. One of the reasons why they are so loved is the fact that they have a big personality and are known for being quite intelligent. The kakapo is the world's only flightless parrot and is also the world's heaviest. Adults can measure 65 centimeters long and can weigh up to 4 kilograms. As they don't fly their short wings are used for balance and they are known for being great climbers in their forested homes. It's said that kakapos have a musty sweet odor and this smell is said to be very honey or flower like. As New Zealand has been separated from the rest of the world for around 80 million years it has a very unique ecosystem. Bats were the only native mammals to New Zealand and most of the landscape was dominated by large birds. This meant that for millions of years the kakapo had little to fear and this might be the reason behind their friendly personality. Some kakapos are known to approach, climb on and preen people and the English ornithologist that first described the kakapo once wrote that its personality was more like that of a dog than a bird. In fact both the Maori and European settlers kept them as pets and these really were pets for life. Kakapos are thought to be one of the longest living birds in the world, with a reported lifespan of up to 100 years. This means that there's probably a kakapo out there that's older than you, but unfortunately their numbers are not as strong as they used to be. The kakapo's decline first started when the Polynesians first arrived on the island. These birds were hunted for food, skin and their feathers, and their feathers were often used to make cloaks. When kakapos are cornered, they often freeze to try and blend in with their environment, but in most cases this makes them easier to hunt. Humans also brought with them a host of invasive animals, such as rats, stoats, ferrets and weasels. As the kakapos were not used to dealing with such predators, their numbers plummeted and this wasn't helped by the fact that large parts of their habitat were cleared to create farms. In 1891, the New Zealand government set aside Resolution Island for the kakapos and 200 individuals were moved here so that their numbers could grow away from predators. However, by 1900, stoats had swam to the island and within six years they had wiped out all the kakapos. By the 1920s, the kakapo was extinct in the North Island and its numbers were dwindling on the South Island. It was estimated by 1995 there were only 51 individuals left and the future did not look bright for the kakapo. This wasn't helped by the fact that they breed very infrequently as they rear their young on the fruits of their native trees and these trees only fruit every two to six years. The kakapos only tend to breed on these occasions and this made it very hard for their numbers to bounce back at all. Luckily with conservation efforts, captive breeding and extensive monitoring, the numbers are thought to be just over 200 and although this is impressive they are by no means out of the woods yet. And as all known adult kakapos are monitored today, they all have names. These are a mix of English and Maori names and one is even named after Sir David Attenborough. These birds still need your help today and I've left a donation link in the description below and hopefully with your help we'll see more of them in the wild in the future. But for our next species we'll be heading to all major oceans worldwide as we have the humpback whale. Now this baleen whale is one of the most popular whales in the world, mainly for its breaching and surface behaviours. These large whales often feed on krill and small schooling fish and they have a few creative ways of catching them. These whales will often work together to corral fish and krill before trapping them against the surface and breaching the water. Even though they eat such small food, they can still reach a whopping size of around 16 meters long and weigh around 30 tons. Humpback whales also have a few ways of communicating with each other. They produce long complex songs, some of which can last up to 20 minutes long. It's also believed that their impressive breaching of the water is also another way to communicate with each other. They often slap their fins and flukes on the surface of the water and this sound can travel very long distances. Although their numbers are more stable nowadays, the humpback whale was once hunted to the brink of extinction. The humpback was a main target for the whaling industry and it's thought that at least 300,000 individuals were killed worldwide and it's thought that at one time their population in the South Atlantic dropped to around 450 individuals. Luckily protections were put in place in the 1960s and by 1985 a complete ban was put on commercial whaling. Unfortunately, some countries still hunt whales somewhat illegally and many are still hit by ships and caught up in fishing gear. Today it is estimated that there are around 84,000 individuals and this number is increasing. And luckily for the world, the ban was put in place. Otherwise, we would have lost one of the world's most iconic animals. But for our next species, we'll be heading to North America as we have the bald eagle. The bald eagle is the national bird of the United States and is often seen as a symbol of the country. So much so that it appears on the seal and it is seen as an icon 
Nikon to this day, although it is mostly associated with the US. It can also be found in Canada and northern Mexico. In these areas, it is an opportunistic feeder and mainly feeds on fish. Bald eagles build the largest nests out of all the North American birds, and the largest ever known was four meters deep. Although these birds are known for their white head and tail feathers, young eagles look very different. They're mostly a speckled brown color and don't get the white coloring until they reach maturity. Bald eagles are known to make a high-pitched giggle or weak scream. <laughs> And some would describe this to be very unimpressive. This is why in many Hollywood movies their call is actually dubbed over and is usually replaced with hawk cries. Although bald eagles are quite stable nowadays, this wasn't always the case. Before the European settlers arrived, bald eagles were abundant across the US, but these settlers destroyed their habitat and also hunted them. They were viewed as a threat to livestock and thousands of these birds were killed. In 1940, an act was passed to protect the birds and although this slightly helped them, another threat was just around the corner. During World War II, farmers used an insecticide called DDT. The chemical worked very well to eradicate pests, but as this chemical worked its way up the food chain, it found its way to the bald eagle. DDT DDT made the bald eagle's eggs too thin and often caused them to break. This resulted in a huge decline in the birds' numbers, and by 1963 there were only around 471 bald eagle pairs. DDT was banned in the 1970s, and conservationists began to breed bald eagles in captivity. Luckily, the species made a spectacular recovery, and today they are thought to be almost 10,000 nesting pairs. So luckily they bounced back, but this just goes to show we need to take care in how we treat our environment. Before our next species, we'll be staying in North America as we have the black-footed ferret. This this member of the weasel family is the only ferret native to North America, but what may be even more surprising is that there are only three species of ferret in the world. The European polecat, the black-footed ferret, and the Siberian polecat. Ferrets are known for being very flexible, and this gives them the ability to go down burrows and root out their prey. Up to 90% of the black-footed ferret's diet is composed of prairie dogs, and in fact one ferret may eat more than 100 prairie dogs in one year. Black-footed ferrets once numbered in the tens of thousands, but widespread habitat destruction and new exotic diseases brought them to the brink of extinction. They were once found with black-tailed prairie dog colonies across the Great Plains. Threats from many different angles led to there only being 18 individuals in 1986, as they were historically hunted for their fur, and plague led to a huge prairie dog die-off. Some of the surviving ferrets were put into a breeding program, and luckily this breeding was successful. Conservation groups and zoos have been actively reintroducing these ferrets back into the wild since 1991, and today their number has risen to 340 individuals. So although they are nowhere near out of the woods yet, at least this is a start. Before our final species, we'll be heading to the island of Grand Cayman, as we have the blue iguana. This species is endemic to Grand Cayman, which is the largest island of the Cayman Islands. These lizards prefer rocky, sunlit open areas, often near the shore. Despite having very sharp, menacing teeth, these iguanas are herbivorous, feeding on plants, fruits, and flowers. As you can tell, this iguana got its name because some individuals are a bright blue colour. Although this colour can be very impressive, a large number of these animals are a greyish-brown colour. This iguana was once considered a subspecies of the Cuban rock iguana, but in 2004, it was reclassified as a separate species, as it showed many genetic differences. Blue iguanas are thought to be one of the longest living lizards, with them possibly having a lifespan of up to 70 years. Luckily, you can see these lizards in the wild nowadays, but this wasn't always the case. This iguana was possibly abundant before the European colonization, but there were fewer than 15 animals by 2003. They were predicted by many to go extinct, but luckily they managed to bounce back. The main reason behind their decline was thought to be invasive species. They were often predated on by cats and dogs, and a lot of their suitable habitat was destroyed to make fruit farms. Luckily, conservationists stepped in, and luckily since 2004, hundreds have been released back into the wild. And thanks to conservationists, we still have one of the most unique lizards in the world. But that's about it for this video. If you have any other video suggestions, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.